Okay, kids, you can see that I'm dressed in my Sunday best. Looking good. Hmm? Looking pretty sweet. All right, now, we all, it's snowing outside. It's like really coming down out there. I wonder if I'll be snowed in here. I can never leave the academy. That would be awesome. The place that makes me whole. Woo! Stuck forever. Okay, kids. Um, they're actually, they've already told me, I made an arrangement, that um, when I die, they're going to actually uh, bury me up on the, the roof. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Okay, kids, here's what we got. There'll be an eternal flame going on all the time. You know, just be constantly lit there. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Now, check it out. I've got some stuff I need to get through. We have to go through complex circuits, but before I do that, I have to wrap up some things on circuitry. Just little things here and there that we should know, little terms and how things work. We should just know this stuff. So here I'm going to go through a couple of, because it's kind of a plethora video. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, man. So first thing I want to talk about is what is called terminal... Voltage, not terminal velocity, because that's ooh, falling. No, 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 terminal voltage. You'll see that term, <laughs> term, terminal voltage, funny. Now, terminal means at the end, voltage is a fancy way of saying also internal resistance. You have battery, um, even a dead battery, well, have a voltage associated with it. You connect a voltmeter up to a dead battery, and it might read 1.3 volts. Well, how come it's not working? It's not 1.3 out of 1.5. You know, your typical 1.5. How come it's not working? What's the piece of lazy? Let's do it. Well, no. What happens is, remember poop, P-O-O-P, -O -O people order our patties. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Little sponge out there. Now, we all know that inside the battery, where we have our gunk that makes the redox reaction, you end up getting these compounds in here that form that restrict the flow of the electrons. So it's not so much that a battery just doesn't give up, it, doesn't, it still has voltage. It's just that it loses the ability for those electrons that are being released to make their way through with an appropriate amount of velocity to continue. Like a light bulb, a light bulb when it, you know, in a, in a flashlight. When a flashlight, leave a flashlight, try this at home. Your parents will love it. Take a flashlight, like one of those emergency flashlights when we have power outages, which we always do in Chester, they have them all the time anyway. They don't have any power, so they have outages. Yeah, so you know, you take a flashlight, you just leave it on. Over time, watch it. Eventually, it's just fun, it's good, clean fun. Hmm? For the whole family, gather around and watch that flashlight. Eventually, the light bulb goes, this is it's not just burning bright and then dead. No, it, it eventually dims down. Well, what's going on? The flow rate of electrons getting to that light bulb out here slows down because of the buildup of internal resistance. That is internal, re a battery has to overcome its own stuff, its own resistance to keep things afloat. And that internal resistance is called the terminal voltage or the voltage used to get electrons or electricity to flow from one terminal to the other through the battery. So terminal voltage is the same thing as internal resistance of a battery. And you'll have some questions in this next group of problems that will ask you to determine the terminal voltage of the battery. And that's what it means. It means there's a certain amount. So the battery, maybe the battery is a 1.5 volt battery, but it has to use uh, maybe 0.1 of its own volt potential to push electrons through itself. It's kind of weird. I guess it's kind of like a clogged artery. <laughs> For lack of a better analogy that just came to mind. You know, you got an artery there and, you know, it's inside you and, you know, your, your, your heart's trying to push stuff through you, but you have internal resistance slowing down the flow rate, making it more difficult for, you get it, yeah, internal resistance. So, yeah, internal resistance builds up, you have a heart attack. Or, in this case, the battery just can't put out electrons at a quick enough rate to do the job you want it to do. So, terminal voltage, internal resistance mean the same thing. I'm going to write that down. Now, internal resistance is the cause. So I guess I shouldn't say they're exactly the same thing. They're referring to the same thing, not exactly the same thing. The internal resistance of a battery is what causes terminal voltage. In other words, some of the battery's own voltage to be used on itself. That makes sense? Yeah. So as internal resistance of a battery builds up, the more voltage or terminal voltage a battery has to use to push electrons out of itself and through itself. Okay. All right. So now you know what that term is. Okay. 
So you'll see that term, and if you're asked to find the terminal voltage, you're trying to find what the amount of voltage used on a battery to get, overcome its own resistance. All right, another thing I want to talk about is something called drift velocity. Drift velocity. You see, we're under the illusion that when I, hang on, stay right there. When I shut the lights off, boop, boop, and turn them on, shut them on, and turn them on, well, electricity must be just flying right through that line. I mean, from the switch, which, boom, all the way to the back of the room, instantaneously. Electricity is moving. Yes and no. I, I, the signal to turn the lights on in the back of the room is essentially instantaneous. The speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, 186,000 miles in a second. It's pretty quick. That's like speed Gonzales on steroids. Blah, 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 blah. Hombre, hombre, hombre. You know, little Mexican hat on, little mouse. Check them out. It's pretty funny. Um, Looney Tunes, awesome. Yeah, so the signal goes really fast. And that's why the lights in the back of the room will turn on instantaneously because the signal for them to turn on is there instantaneously. So they turn on. Wait a minute. I thought current means the flow of particles. Like current would mean that you have electrons moving. Correct. Well, aren't they moving? Like really fast? No, no, no. Can you imagine if we turn the light on and electrons went from the light switch to the back of the room instantaneously, how fast that is? Boy, that, that wire would just go boom and vaporize because the amount of, you know what happens when things go fast, they increase heat. So no, 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 the electrons are not moving that fast. They have what's called drift velocity. So this, what this means is electrons, they do move. They do move in a direct current. Here's a wire. The electrons will move along that wire. They'll do that. Or even with AC current, the electrons are actually moving back and forth. They're going, ah, 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 ah. Make up your mind, man. Make up your mind. But they do have, you know, it's kind of like that three steps forward, one step, two steps back kind of a thing with AC. So they are moving forward both in DC and in AC. Even though in electrons in DC, they're never, never going in a different direction, always going one direction. So hot, I'm so upset they broke up in one direction. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also know that with AC, that it's alternating. So the current actually alternates, but it will eventually drift down the wire. Now we have this illusion that's fast. It isn't actually. Drift velocity in AC circuitry, which we have 120 sweet volts of power that we plug in, Moves it around. You ready for this? This is fast. Speedy Gonzales right here. Ready? One meter per second. One meter per hour. One meter per second actually wouldn't be bad. One meter per hour. Yeah, that's right. I said it. One meter per hour. That far in one hour. The electrons aren't moving very fast. What happens is the signal for electrons that are already in the filament, already there, if we're talking an incandescent bulb, already there, it tells them to start moving. Oh, oh, okay, I'll go I'll move. The signal goes from switch to the bulb immediately, and you tell, move, and they go, okay. So they start moving at the instantaneous decision to turn the light on or off or stop moving. But they themselves, the electrons themselves, only move about a meter an hour. So they're not moving very fast. It's called drift velocity. You know, it's kind of drifting along. Not fast. All right, moving on. So we're wrapping some things up here, making like a gift and booking it. <laughs> you thought I was going to say wrapping it up, didn't you? Oh, gotcha. All right, yeah. What else do we have? Um, electrocution. Okay, I want to talk about electrocution. Now, don't try this at home for professionals only, okay? All right. With emergency personnel standing by. What happens when you stick your finger in a 120-volt outlet? Again, don't try that at home, professionals only, okay? Leave that to the idiots right here. I'm, I'm, I know enough about electricity that I'm dangerous. What I mean by that is, if you don't know anything about electricity, just leave it alone, right? You say, oh, touching that, oh, you know, which is a smart thing. I know enough about how things function that I'm, all right, I'll try this, I'll try that. Whoa, geez, I should have done that. Ow. If you've ever been shocked,
by a 120 volt outlet is not pleasant. Okay, it, it ranges anywhere from oh, rack a frick. I mean, you say some colorful adjectives, some sentence enhancers. Remember, Sailor Mouth, SpongeBob, awesome episode. Mr. Crab, he said, Boyo. Where was I? Oh yeah, rack a frick. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna know it. Okay, it's not, not pleasant. Most people don't find getting electrocuted pleasant or getting shocked. They don't usually don't. So and it's really a weird sensation. I've actually done it where I, I, that's a long story. I don't have time. This video is too long. But you'd ask me about it. I kind of did it to myself on purpose, thinking that I wasn't going to, but I did. Not fun. Not fun. It was a dry day. I was cold, and I was on a wooden ladder, and I had like sneakers, but it still wasn't fun. But you can also, if you stick your finger in an outlet or touch a live wire when the wire doesn't have any you know, stuff on it, no, no, no insulation on it, which is plugged in, you can die. Whoa! So you can go anywhere from, ah, we're gonna friggin' brah, to, oh, <clears throat> dead. Mm -hmm. Why? What's the difference? Well, here's what we got going on. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. You might have heard this saying before. It's not the voltage that kills you, it's the current. To, 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 to a, more or less, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would say, yeah, that, that's true. That is true. You're really looking at current, which, which causes electrocution, although you do need voltage in order to push it, and you need a certain amount, although it won't work. Like, you can die with 120. If you take a 12-volt car battery and, and you know, touch the terminals, or if you have a long enough tongue, but you'd have to have a pretty long tongue, stick your tongue between the two terminals, now, I mean, pleasant, but you know, you're not going to die. It's not enough voltage. It doesn't, doesn't do the job. You can actually survive 10,000 volts. Don't try that. Okay, don't try that. 10,000 volts. 10,000 volts are the lines, the, the electrical lines that you have you know, in your neighborhood that are going down the street. Those are 10,000 volts. You can touch those and survive. Okay, chances are more likely you won't because it's 10,000 volts as opposed to 120 volts. You can survive 10,000 but, but, but die at 120. Why is that? Okay, it really is to some degree about current. Your, your heart will stop at 0.1 amps, 0.1, not, not one, 0.1 amps across your heart. Um, well, usually, uh, most people just stop their heart. Your heart is a, an electrical pump. If you've ever taken anatomy, you, know, you should do it. It's pretty fun. Mr. Vizuski, cool guy. Mr. Malley, awesome. Um, you will find out that your, your, your heart pumps on potassium ions, which move back and forth, causing the muscle to contract and expand, contract and expand. It's a constant shifting of ions in the heart muscle. All muscles work like that too, calcium ions. Your muscle pump the ion. So if you put electricity across the heart, and that's continuing to go across the heart, the heart muscle will contract or, or expand and it cannot go back because the electricity is not allowing it to contract and, uh, and relax. It's just going to get really contracted and it can't relax. It's, you stop the heart dead. Point one will do it. All right, check it out now. If we take 120 volts, okay, this is good stuff, right? Got your attention now. Talking about electrocution, talking about some physics of death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm sorry. Turn this off. It's PG-13, people. If you can't handle it, PG-13, move, move forward. So 120 volts of household outlet. You, typically, if your skin is dry, okay, you're not all sweaty, you're not saturated in water, you're not in the bathtub, then you typically, most people would have a resistance in their skin. Dry skin has a very high resistance. That's, yeah, I, I, that's right. I wrote that correctly. 500,000, half a million ohms. Dry skin, half a million ohms. It's not conductive to electric. Your skin typically is not conductive. It's dry to electricity. Do the math. Come on. You can do it. 1.2 divided by 5,000. Okay, it's small, all right? It's small. It's, it's way below that, that 0.1. Way below that. Um, all right, now, here's what happens. If... You decide to go swimming in the ocean, nice salt water bath. You're drenched in salt water. You're all naked. You got no clothes on, drenched in salt water. And go ahead and stick your hand on a live wire in a socket. 
Here's what happens. Your resistance decreases. The voltage is still 120 for an household socket, but what you've done, though, is you've made your skin relatively conductive. You've gone from dry skin to wet, salty skin. Also, when you sweat, if you are drenched in sweat, same thing, salt water. Now, you go down to 500. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh-huh, you kids can see it. You kids can see it. Yeah, 12 or 1.2 divided by five. That's point death, okay? You're above the point one threshold. That's point death. That's what you've just done to yourself. So, you know, and I can, I remember watching this one horror movie. It's called The Ring. I remember that. And all my guys, students that came, I gotta go see The Ring, gotta see The Ring. It, it's so scary. No, no, I've seen scary, okay? Okay, don't watch this movie. It's called The, uh, uh, the, Exorcist, the Exorcist. Yeah, scary, it's yeah, scary. Rank not scary. But there was this one scene where this person has a TV in their hand, they're standing in a bathtub, and they drop the TV. And they <laughs> dead. Mythbusters checked that out. They took Buster. Buster is their, you know, their, their mannequin person. They put electrodes on him and they took a toaster and dropped it in the in the, the bathtub to see if Buster would die. Yep, dead. Yeah, be because what you've got. Well, that's not salt water, that's fresh water. Well, yes and no. I mean, fresh water is still not pure. It's not pure fresh. There are some ions in it. One, and you, you probably have sweated during the day, so you've got sweat coming off of you. And so you, and, and there's also a metal, there's metal on the bathtub, the metal drain, which goes into a pipe that goes into the ground, boom, right there. You've got all kinds of issues there. If you do that, yes, yeah, that's, a, that's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. Okay, leave that to the professionals, okay, with emergency crew standing by. I've done it three times. It explains a lot, okay. <laughs> Okay, so that means you dropped your resistance down to 500. Dead, yeah. So it is the current that stops your heart. However, if you take 10,000, all right, so 10,000, which is you know, your, your power line that's going outside your house, it goes out, out there at 10,000, it comes in your house as a transformer. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the course. Transformers, robots in disguise, transformers, robots in disguise. You know that uh, a transformer can change that voltage. What a transformer does, it changes the voltage, and we'll go through why, but not now. So if you take this and divide it by 500,000, one divided by 50, it ain't gonna feel good, it's gonna burn. Your skin will get burned, you get electrical burns. But um, you can actually survive touching 10,000 volts. Of course, most people, if you are in the neighborhood of a 10,000 volt line, immediately begin to sweat. You, don't, you can't control that. You become nervous. You just mm. sweat. And so you're not going to be at 500,000 ohms of resistance. You're not. You're going to be down here and dead. Yeah. But you can survive 10,000 volts. Okay, okay, don't try any of this, okay? Just, just trust me. Trust me, okay? Trust me. I'm pretty sure that's what Sitting Bull said to Custer before the Battle of Little Bighorn, and it turned out okay for Custer. Okay, so electrocution comes down to the it, it, voltage. Yeah, it's important, but it really comes down, a lot of it comes down to current, how much current that's going through you. When they used to electrocute people, they used to use 10,000 volts. Okay, use a lot of volts and wanted to make sure the job was done. And they used to take uh, a sponge, put it in salt water, put it on the person's head, put an electrode on, and the same thing with their ankle. And so then the electricity will go down through you and you'll have low resistance with the salt water. Green Mile, uh -huh. there's a movie called The Green Mile. Mm -hmm. not, not, you know what I'm talking about, you've seen it. You've seen that scene where the guy said, I don't like the guy, so I'm not gonna put any stuff on his head. And uh, Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If you don't know what I'm saying, check it out. Green Mile, good movie, Tom Hanks. All right, now. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, electricians, when they're working on wires, trained, take their one hand, just put it in the back of them as a habit while they're working on something. Well, why is that? That because if they do get <laughs> electrocuted for some reason, they touch something they're not supposed to, and electricity goes through them, it won't go through and across to something else it might be touching. If you're working on electricity and you're touching a metal pipe over here, that's not good, okay? You touch, bah, electricity, bah, right across the heart, dead, across the heart, dead. Okay, you don't want the electricity to go across the heart. Um, there was this kid, yeah, it, 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 it was high school, I think it was Dover High School, like five or six years ago. Um, the kid, um, kids in his class, 
I bet that he would not. <laughs> right, here's how it went. For a Mountain Dew, the bet was for a Mountain Dew. What some people will do for a Mountain Dew. Idiots, okay. The bet was, hey, I'll give, you some, I'll give you a Mountain Dew if you will take two alligator clips, okay, lift your shirt up, attach them, attach them to the nipples. I said the N word, I said the nipples, nipples, nipples. Doggone it. Yeah, attach them to, and did that right there should be worth a case in Mountain Dew because that would not be pleasant. And again, don't do not try this at home, and I never tried this, so I'm not that stupid. Okay. So I purposely got myself a shock once, but I wouldn't do this. So puts them on, then, you ready? You ready? Take the two ends and stick them in a 120 volt outlet and see what happens. Okay, you do that, I'll give you a mountain. Kid did it. Stop his heart. Yeah, you just went 120 volts across your heart. And of course, you're sweating when you're doing this. You cause yourself pain, you know what you're doing because you're sweating. So you, you resist it, boom. And so the current went through across his chest, right across the chest, killed him. Well, he actually technically didn't kill him. Stopped his heart. Let me back the truck up on that. Didn't kill him, stopped his heart. And you can look this up. You can go, go Google it. Yeah, Dover High School kid electrocute self. Stop his heart. They, they got his heart going. They got a defibrillator. and It's interesting that you can kill yourself by having electricity go across your heart, but you also restart the heart by having electricity go across the heart. Yes, yes, you can. Electricity. Give it and take it. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. What people will do for a do. Okay. Beyond me. All right. Um, I'd so go for hot chocolate. Hot chocolate? I might. I might. Chocolate's the nectar of life. Maybe. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be a tough one. All right. So let's see. We talked about electrocution. Um, let's see. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Oh, one more. One more. Oh, that was a long video, I know, but I got to get this all, all done. Household circuits. Let's say that you're in the kitchen and you turn on your coffee maker. Okay, here's your coffee maker. Do you have to have the blender working as well? Do you have to have the blender working at the same time the coffee maker is working in order for the coffee maker to work? Do you have to have the lights on in order to have the coffee maker to work and vice versa? Do you have to have the coffee maker to make the, 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 the lights to work? You know the answer. That's no. You can use the blender when you want to use the blender. You can use the coffee maker. You can use them at the same time if you want. You can use them separately. You don't have to have one on to have the other on. How are household circuits? Well, there was only one way to pull that bad Larry out. Here's your blender. Here's your toaster. They are wired in parallel. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And they have to be. Otherwise, you'd have to have one on to have the rest of them go on. It's like you know, it, the 12 Pains of Christmas. Remember that song from, you know, the 12 Pains of Christmas? Rigging up the lights. Some of you know what I'm talking about. One goes out, they all go out. Yeah, that was back in my day. Lights on, they're all in series, that's series. If one goes out and the light bulbs are in series, there's your light bulb string. If one goes out, everybody goes out. There's no, there's no way around. So that would be old light bulbs on, on a Christmas tree. Now, nowadays, light bulbs on a Christmas tree, like if you get 50 on a string, um, there's usually, I think it's about five of them are in series with another wire that goes around in case that one, so they're kind of a combination circuit is what light bulbs are now. So if one goes out, they all don't go out. So a few of them go out. So that's, that's, that's your series. So your, your kitchen and your house would be a real pain in the butt if it was connected in series. You'd have to have everything on in a room in order to have anything on in the room. And that's annoying and very expensive too. So this way we can have our coffee maker on we can have, you know, there's a switch to the coffee maker, a switch to the blender, and a switch to the toaster. You know, you can put a little switch here. A little switch. Open switch. Nothing's being used. But if I want to use my blender, you know, turn it on. Close the switch. And bzzz, electricity goes through. We got our blender. Okay? All right? Okay? All right. So we know that they're in parallel. Your car lights, your headlights on an automobile, what are those? Those are in... Well, if one car light goes out, does the other one go out? No. So those are not in series. They're in parallel as well. Parallel makes things 
nice and convenient. You can use one thing or another thing or everything if you want. So parallel is awesome when it comes to circuitry in most things in a house. Um, there are times where you do not want to have things all in, in parallel. You would want them in series. And let's talk about why that would be. Okay, here's the thing though. We have seen, you have seen the videos where if we have the more things that we have running or using or turned on in parallel, mm -hmm, the math will, exp well, I've gone through the math on this. You get fast flowage, you get amperage, you get a lot of amps being used. Boom, boom, boom. When more things that you turn on in parallel, the electric starts going faster, 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 faster. That can be a problem. That can be a safety problem. If you get the electricity going so fast, well, what happens when things go really fast? They generate heat. You can generate enough heat to cause a fire. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is a safety device in any household circuit called a fuse. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. Funny. All right, now, let me just put a, few, a fuse a real fuse, and most houses don't have fuses anymore. If you have a fuse box in the house, boy, that's old. Get that replaced. You should have a circuit breaker box. Okay, they function the same. They do the same job. So a fuse, and I've really blown this up like probably a hundred times. Fuses aren't very big. Now what it is, like a steel piece of glass here. This is metal. This is metal. This is glass with a thin wire inside. That's a fuse, a thin wire. And if you put a fuse here, no, I won't do it. I refuse. <laughs> Again. Funny, oh my gosh, that is, that is so funny, yeah, yeah, so, yo, wake up, wake up, I know it's a long video, but you'll hang with me, we're almost done, hang with, hang in there, hang in there, wake up, so here is, maybe this is your power source, there's your fuse, so the fuse is designed, that if you turn on all three things, well, electricity will start, zoom, flying through that line, causing heat generation, causing a potential electrical fire, oh, that's bad, that's bad, 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 bad boy, bad boy, so what you want is the fuse right here in series. Write this down. The fuse or circuit breaker is wired in series to everything that's in parallel in the circuit. Each room of the house usually on its own circuit or it's on its own fuse. The kitchen or the living room or maybe a couple bedrooms, they are fused on a circuit. If you start using everything at once and that energy starts cranking, the amps are cranking, generate heat, this fuse with that thin wire is designed to break. It's designed to get hot, break, bzz, snap. Why? Because you're shutting down, you're going to cause a fire. So this is designed to shut down the electricity to the circuit. Now, of course, a lot of houses don't have fuses. Your automobile that runs on fuses. It has, it has a little fuse panel. Yeah, check it out. Find it. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Okay, you back? Okay. Now, a circuit breaker is the same idea if you generate so much speed because you're using so many things in parallel, it'll shut down the line, it'll shut down the circuit. A, a circuit breaker is actually um, functions on what's called a bimetallic strip. A circuit breaker is a bimetallic, two different metals, and when they get warm, metals expand. But since they're different metals, they'll expand at different rates, and that causes them to bend. It causes one side to bend, and the other is a contact over here, keeping the circuit, you got the circuit uh, here, it'll bend away from that contact, shutting down the line. So a circuit breaker is the same thing. It shuts the electricity off, doesn't elect the electricity, keep flowing because you're generating too much heat by using too many things at once. And you've done, you probably, you know, tripped the circuit breaker before. You're up in your bedroom, you get the air conditioner on, you get your TV on, you get your lights all on, and you decide, your stereo on, you decide to, to crank up like 1800 watt a hair dryer. That'll do it. That'll poof, trip circuit breaker. How did you do? So now you have to go and flip the circuit back. You find the circuit breaker box in the basement or in the garage, and you flip it back. How do I know which one it's going to be? It's the only one pointing in the opposite direction of every other one. Okay, that's the one that you tripped. So what you have to do is put it back. Sometimes it won't let you do that. You go down and you take the circuit breaker and you flip it back in the right direction and it goes, no, mm-mm, it -mm. goes, no. And you go, what? No, me, no, because it's still too hot and it won't let you put it in the proper direction to allow flow until it cools down. Okay, so remember that? We have a circuit 
breaker or a fuse in series. So it shuts down everything. That's what you want. You don't want your fuse here. If you put your fuse here, then if things get too hot, it's only gonna shut down that device. You don't want that, you want to shut everything down. Safety first, people, safety first. Okay, all right, let's see. Uh, think, 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 think. So the advantage of parallel, you don't have to have everything on to use something. The disadvantage, you can cause a fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so you need a circuit breaker as a safety device that's connected in series to shut down everything else. You don't want your circuit breaker or fuse in parallel. That, that's stupid. Uh, the advantage of series, there actually is an advantage of series, is that it will slow the electricity down. Things in a row, slows down the flow of electricity, and sometimes you want that with a particular electrical device. Sometimes you want that design to decrease heat. Um, you want the flow to be slow for whatever reason. Okay, you become an electrical engineer, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, kids, this has been a long video, so let's wrap this up. And, whew, there's a lot of things we talked about. I hope you learned something.